That's why seminars like this are very... All of you must come here next month. Next month we are having a marriage seminar and family seminar. The leaflets are in your pack. I'm, 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 I'm speaking with my wife and my mentor, Bishop Akoto Banfu Powerland. He and his wife are speaking with me here. The end of September, all of us will be here. All of you should come. No fee. It's free. Come. During lunchtime, go to Tesco and buy your food. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> number nine. Investigation number nine. Do they come from a stable family or unstable? Some call it dysfunctional. You see, what they are used to is what they will display. If a husband shouts on his wife, a father shouts on his wife, when the children grow up, they'll shout on their wife because that's what they know. What you see at home is what you will display. So do they come from, you need to invest it. Go to their house. Don't do this hiding of things. Don't hide. If you are interested in somebody, eventually let the parents know. All the people my, child, my son and my daughter move with, we know all of them. Where my children go, I know where they are. Wherever they go, they are supposed to call and say, I am here, I am there. It's only once my son said he was going to where? And he ended up in Birmingham. But he was doing something good, so he's all right. But you must know where they are going. Investigate the family. Go to the house. See how they talk to each other. Because that's exactly how they will talk to you at home. Stable or unstable. Number 10. Does the person you intend to marry respect their parents or are rude? Do they speak rudely to their family? Do they cast or swear? Because that's exactly what they are used to and that's exactly what they will repeat. Charity begins at home. Number 11. Social standing. Now, you need to get this one. Is the person you are about to marry. Don't worry if you cannot take the notes. Just get the book. So I can explain the thing. Is that alright? You can't catch me. Get the book. You can catch me at home. Social standing. This is um, an area many people miss it. Is the person you are about to marry your size. Don't use faith on me here. I have faith to believe for Bill Gates. Your grammar is still Ghana grammar. You want to marry Bill Gates. I want to marry into the royal family. You see, you say family. <laughs> That's the fact. You say family. They won't invite you into the family. <laughs> what is family? <laughs> <coughs> royal family, you say Laurel, Laurel family. <laughs> Is that your size? It's too big for your mouth. I will marry Prince Harley, Harley, and marry Prince Weary. I'm weary, I'm weary. I'm... No, 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 no. Your R is replacing your L. You can't get there. Royal, Laurel family. No, 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 no. People cloud. You see, that's faith, foolishness, and presumption. Social standing is the person. I'm not saying it cannot happen, but let me explain. What it is the person you're about to marry your size in your league or way beyond your league? Social standing, like the man being a laborer or a, an ordinary gardener or handyman intending to marry a doctor or a lawyer or a parliamentarian or an architect or politician, and he says he's doing it by faith. Now, next slide. It may be possible to, for that to happen, but you must count the cost involved. If you are ready to pay the price to improve your English, if you are prepared to deal with your insecurities when they organize party and they are using fork and, you know, I used to think when we were growing up, they, when, they, when my mother taught us to lay table, fork on the left, knife, and then spoon. Then, Later on, recently, I went somewhere, and I noticed that the forks are different. They had three forks. There's one fork. See, me, to me, one fork is for catching the thing. The knife is for cutting. The spoon is for drinking. Then I went somewhere, and they had four, four forks of different size, one knife, two knives, and spoon for different. So one is for the soup. One is for the dessert. Me, I use one one to, to remove all. Now, if I'm, I'm married to somebody who uses four forks, I'm used to one. I just go to the party. If dignitaries have arrived, 
They all start eating. I just take my soup. <laughs> I must learn how sense of decorum I must be willing to sacrifice to learn the thing before I enter. Or I would disgrace myself among the Laura royal family. <laughs> so it's not that you can't marry, but you must be get the details, pay the price. Then, okay, you're married to a politician. Well, they talk big English. You're married to a lawyer. They argue cases. So you must be up to. So you can do it, but on condition, pay the price. My wife is married to a preacher. Now in line with her destiny, she had to let, when my wife, we first married my wife after a while, and she got to know, people kept saying, my mentor said, you are, you are called into ministry. He said, hey, 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 I don't want to speak to anybody. I don't want to speak. I don't want to speak. Eventually, you saw her speak today. Now, you can't marry a preacher and not know how to teach. There are times they will call you to speak to the women. If you don't know anything, not everybody can marry a pastor. Because very often, pastors do things and the members blame their wife. So being a pastor's wife requires grace. So not every woman can marry a pastor. Don't just say, hey, she, she. Look at Bishop and his wife say, hey, hey, this woman is on TV. Me too, let me go and find some. The members, the members of churches will show you the way out quick. You wear high heels. They wear high, high heels to compete with you. You wear your hair somewhere. They go and do it and then shake it. And then the women come more to your husband and hug her. They push you out of the way and hug your husband. That you must be secure to see women hugging your husband and still be intact. So watch what you ask for. You must be willing to deal with your insecurities. Number 12, think about purpose, dreams, visions. 120 mandatory questions. Purpose. Dreams, vision. 13, think about compat are you compatible with the person? Are you, do you get along? Are you compatible? 14, do we get on? You don't get on. And you are planning a, a wedding. Hoping and are praying that things will change. Right now, you fight every day. What is to say you won't fight in a marriage? Right now, you can't stand each other. And you want to go and put a ring on. Until death do we fight. <laughs> do you get on? 15. Do we have same or similar interests? Or we are far apart? 16. Do we like each other? That's friendship. Feel you. Do we like... Remember what I said, love and like. So, do we like each other? One. Seventeen. Do we love each other? There's a difference. There's a difference between liking somebody and loving somebody. With marriage, you need both. And then you need this one. Eighteen. Do we have in mind to have a family? Now, these are questions you must ask. There are some people who don't say, I don't want children before they marry. Then they marry and say, I don't want children. And then the other person's family is asking, when, is my, when are my grandchildren coming? Uh -huh. Then, 19, is God's love at the center of your relationship? That's agape. 20, do you get on with your family or are always at loggerheads? Now, once you marry, you have to deal with in-laws. In-laws are another story. Fathers-in-law, mothers-in-law. And especially if the boy is the mother's favorite. There's nothing you, the woman, will do that will make the wife, the mother happy. And especially when they come and live in your house. I lived with my, when I first got married, my mother came to this country and lived with us for 14 years. How many years? 14. When you want to make love to your wife and your mother is next door. If you want to express yourself in joy, you can't express it because your mother is there. So sometimes, like, even after your mother has left, you still cannot express because you still think she is there. Am I being real with somebody here? 
<laughs> you need to, it's traumatic. You see, when you reach the, 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 the apex, the heavenly realm, which eventually you will, not now, don't go there. You want to speak in tongues, but your father-in-law is next door. So those of you who are planning to your mother and your father to come and live permanently with you, you need to discuss all this. If you and your father say, I'm coming to London and I'll be here for six months. He said, Father, you know something? Travel lodge is 1999. <laughs> you can come and eat during the day, but travel lodge is 19 what? 99. Book in advance. Hello? You should be clapping for your pastor. I don't know what you are doing. You, you, you must put your foot down on certain issues. You need to discuss it, man. <laughs> your cousins are there. The cousins-in-law are there. Ah. They're calling you from Ghana. You haven't sent us money. We are dying, you know. <laughs> One of the things you also have to discuss is if you re-meet your parents before you're going to get married, you might discuss whether you, you continue and can continue with the same figure or you have to cut it. And then you may have a backlash. Since he married that rascal, he doesn't send us money again. Is that woman, is that witch, witch, witch that my son married, that witch. Look, when you're going to get married, you have all kinds of talk from everywhere. That's why the two of you must be conk. Friends. Ah! They have not been able to break through us. Ah, 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 ah. One day my mother-in-law called, yeah.